Now, so what is this course about? So I'll list down the topics that we are going to study uh, throughout this course. So the first one, so you will see a lot of things that is that looks really familiar. So in particular, the first one must be familiar. It is the permutation and combination. So this is about combinatorics. We will talk about counting. Okay. So the second topic that we are going to talk about is generating functions. So for this one, if you study what probability or statistics, you may encounter this. Or maybe in some of the discrete math course, you may encounter this. But never mind if you have not heard of it. This is a, a technique that helps us to solve a lot of problems. Okay, And then the third one is the recurrence relation. So recurrence relation is like what? Like you, you have seen recurrence relation before. For instance, the Fibonacci number. So it is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, blah, blah, blah. OK. So, so this is a sequence of numbers. And then we can define them fairly easily. So we, we can first define, oh, the first number in the sequence is 1, and the second number of the sequence is also 1. And then we can further define a rule that generates the number after that. So for every number that you have not seen, the next term must be equal to the sum of the two previous terms. Okay? So we are defining something based on the past. So in that case, this is, re this is the meaning of recurrence. And then we are, this is the relation that talks about the, 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 the relationship between the terms in the sequence. And then you're defining things based on is itself. So, so this, this is something called recurrence relation. And actually, throughout this course, we will see that these three topics, they are highly uh, related. Okay? So this is the first part of, of, of the course. And the next part, we will talk about methods of proving So we will see some proving techniques. So in particular, we will revisit the, the, the mathematical induction, the proof by con contradiction, these two special techniques in, in this course. And then, OK, and then after that, we will talk about some very basic number theory. So very basic things. And then, oh, thank you. And then this helps us, actually, this basic number theory, we're, we're, we're doing a, a, a very powerful uh, crypto, 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 cryptography system called RSA. So we will talk about some basic number theory, and then we will introduce a system called RSA crypto system. This system is very powerful, but also conceptually easy. So I think everyone here should know. OK, so we will talk about this. And then after that, we will talk about, hopefully, we have time, we will talk about some, something called group, group theory. So group theory, we are also talking about basic things there. So group theory is, about, is a topic from algebra. And then it is a topic from abstract algebra. So we will talk about relationship between, yeah, between things. OK, so, so we will we'll talk about this later. And finally, really, if we have time, yeah, no, normally we don't have time. But if we, we, we have time, yes. <laughs> if we have time, then we will talk about something called the automaton, automata theory. And then again, this is also basic. 
So automata theory is a automata is a kind of a very simple machine that can help us to do some computation. So imagine uh, so so how simple it is. So this machine has only finite memory. And then and then and then yeah, finite memory and then and then yeah. So what what are the fine so I'll just tell you a very simple machine, okay, that can read so we so suppose that we want to solve this problem. Somebody gives us a, a bit string, so a bit string, one zero one zero, and then we want to determine after reading this bit string whether it represents a number which is even or odd. Okay. So so to solve this problem, of course we can write a computer program, right? And then divide it by two and then see the remainder. But 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 for a problem like this, we can solve it using just two memory units. So we we can define something called state. So we can define something called so there are two states. One state, let us call it the odd state. And then one state, let us call it the even state. Okay. Okay. And then at the beginning, we don't know how long the, 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 the bit string it is, but we know that when it stops, we should be at the correct position. Okay. So so if let's say let's say this is the starting point. Let's say if we read nothing, it is representing the number zero. So it is an even number. Now, suppose that the bit comes in one by one from left to right. So it may be like one zero one one zero. Okay. It may be look, looking something like this. One zero one zero. So if we read the one, we don't know what is going on after that. Then this one represents the number one, right? So if we read the one, then we are going to move from the even state to the odd state. But on the other hand, if we are having an even number, we see a zero, we can go back to itself. So there are some arrows that tell us what to do if we read in some new bits. Okay? So let me complete what happens here. So it is like this, one, and then it is like zero. Okay? So how to use this? So, so this is the machine that we are looking at. And then if we have a bit string like this, one, zero, one, one, zero. Then we start from here. So let's call it the starting. This is the starting point. We start at this location. We read the one, we read the zero, we read the one, we read the one, and then we read the zero. And after that, we are ending at this position. Am I correct? And then it correctly tells us that this is an even number. Of course, we are so clever that to check whether a number is odd or even in bit string, we just look at the last digit. But this is so simple. This is this is a problem like this. Okay, okay. So so automata theory will look at okay machines that is very simple, so simple that it has only finite number of we call it states memory, and then there there can be some arrows between the memories. Okay, we call it the transitions, and then we want to t we want to know what kind of problems. Can, can this simple machine solve? Okay, we can solve a problem like this. Check whether a number is odd or even. Okay, how about checking whether a bit string is a multiple of five? Do you think we can do this or, or not? So you have a bit string, right? So you have a bit string, let's say this is like one, zero, one, okay? One, zero, one represents the number five. And then if we see this bit string, we should say yes. It is a multiple of five. And how about this one? One, zero, one, zero. Okay, of course, this is also okay. Because this is five, this is five. You have a zero after that. So it is five times two, so this is 10. And then we also say yes. Is that okay? But it can be something like very strange. <laughs> Maybe one, 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 one. So what is one, 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 one? One, one, one is 15. So 15 is also a multiple of 5, and then we, we should also say yes. Okay. So is it possible to design a, a machine like this that has finite number of the state and then checks whether a number is a multiple of 5 or not? 
If you think yes, could you please raise your hand? If you think no, okay, yes. Okay, if you think no, could you please raise your hand? Okay, good. So the answer is yes, okay. So this is quite amazing, right? So we are talking about bit strength, but this is about multiple of five, okay. But, okay, it looks difficult because it is bit strength. It looks like there is some kind of conversion. This is a binary system. This is a divisible by five system. So this is a, li a little bit different, but it, it can do. But on the other hand, okay, so how about this another problem? So, so is it possible? So just wild guess, okay. So is it possible to check, okay, whether the string, so it's still always, let's assume we are only looking at binary string. Is it possible to check if a string is always beginning with one and then ending with zero? So it looks like one, one, one zero, zero, and they have the same number of ones and zeros. So this is like one, 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 zero, zero, zero. Okay, because three ones and then three zeros. And then one, zero, zero, this is not okay because it has one, one and two zeros. And then one, zero, one, this is not okay because this is not in the, in the correct format. We need all the ones and then all the zeros. Is that okay? So we would like to have strings like one, zero, so it is okay. One, one, zero, zero, okay. One, one, one. Zero, zero, zero. This is all also okay. Okay, so we want to design a machine as simple as this one that has finite. Okay, maybe one thousand or ten thousand, but finite, a fixed number of this kind of memory and then arrows, and then we can check whether the string is like in this form. Do you think it? So we want to. We like only strings that is in this form. One, the k number of ones, and then zero k. So more one k times, and zero, zero, zero k times. So I write it as one k, zero k. Do you think we can, so this is, if we have a computer, this is very easy, right? You can write a program, that is very easy, okay? How about this one? If we have a machine like this, do you think we can do that? Let's wild guess. Yeah, you haven't heard of this before, right? So just a guess. If you think this is possible, could you please raise your hand? Okay, good. And if you think it is impossible, could you please raise your hand? Okay, let me tell you the answer. Amazingly impossible. So this looks very simple, a simple problem, but it is impossible. So, so this topic, this topic is, is, is usually the, the what? The introduction to, to, to a computation theory. So I don't know whether we still have a course like this, but, but in, in th for theoretic computer scientists, theoretician, we want to know, okay, if we have a model like this, what is the power of this model? How, how, how many problems can we solve? So we can have automata. So this is a simple thing. We can have more advanced automata. So we ha have automata with something else that is helpful, like, like what? Like we can have a, a stack with the automata together, an extra stack. In, in that case, we can solve more problems, okay? So the matching case, this matching ones and zero, automata, you cannot solve it, but automata with a stack, you can solve it. But there are still some problems that you have a stack and automata, you still cannot solve it. But on the other hand, you can write a program to solve it, right? So what is so special about your, your program? Your program can have memory to use. So it's like this, the memory is here, and then you have a hard disk, a disk that helps. So memory with a hard disk is so powerful that it captures all the computers that we use nowadays. So there is a special name for this one. This is called the Turing machine. Okay, so if you learned more about this uh, computational theory, the first thing you probably will, will talk about is automata theory, and then more, and then Turing machines, and then, but still, but still, there, there are also problems that your computer or any computer cannot solve. Okay, so, so this is the discussion of this one. So I'm telling you a lot of things this one, because for, for very high 
chance we are not going th through this in the course. Okay, I, I hope I hope we can we can talk about this. Okay, so these are the things that I'm intending to to talk. And then, so all of these things actually it is it is just math, but but they have practical uh, applications corresponding to it. For instance, this is the computational theory, so that we can tell the power of a certain kind of machine, and then we can know whether, whether we should look for a more powerful machine or, or just a simple machine. So it, it's like if you are designing a, a, a vending machine for buying Coca-Cola, just putting coins, blah, 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 and then I'll press a button and then go Coca-Cola. You don't want to use your, your laptop or notebook computer to, 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 to solve this problem, right? On the other hand, for, for this kind of vending machine, a, a simple machine like this, automata can already solve it. Even the lift that we are using or the automatic door. So automatic door is like this. You walk and then if it sees someone around, then it, it will open, right? And after a while, it will close, okay? So these kind of things, we can solve it using an automata. So they are real applications. And then, so the number theory is related to crypto system. The group theory, it probably is related to coding system. So crypto system is, is like, uh, I want to send you something secretly. So this is crypt. So crypt is nobody understand, it means so I want to send you something secretly. So I, I want a crypto system. But on the other hand, on, on in some, some cases, I want a coding method. Coding usually is for efficiency purpose. Like I want to send you something using as few number of bits as possible. So maybe I want to use Huffman code. I want to send you something over a network which is very noisy, there are noise. Then in that case, I want to send you a code. Such, I want to send you something by, by transforming it into another way so that you can detect if there are any errors. Or you can even correct if there are any errors. So, so coding theory, usually you need some knowledge in this group theory. And then <laughs> this permutation combination things, it is obviously used in, in analysis. Okay, so sometimes you want to solve a problem, you want to know hey, whether I want to spend some time to, to design a very clever method to solve this, or I just write a brute force program to, to solve it. Sometimes writing a brute force, it takes only a few lines of code, but write a clever method, you need, you need first check whether your method is correct or wrong, and then it may be very complicated, so you need time to debug. So, the, so the ability to, to find out whether the problem that you are, you, you, are, you are handling is complicated or easy enough for your computer to solve it, then you, you, it is, you rely some kind of counting techniques so that you know the problem size that you're, you're looking at. So, so these are the things that uh, hopefully this will, this will be useful to you uh, in your research. Okay.